Hello and welcome to Intruders.tv. We are at Open Coffee in London talking to Jeff Barr, a senior web services evangelist at uh, Amazon. So Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what your role is at uh, Amazon. Okay, so let's see. I've been in the technology business for a long, long time. I started working at a computer store in Seattle in about 1976 <laughs> as a teenager, believe it or not. And I've, I've been in technology ever since. Uh, I, I kind of stepped into the role of evangelist over time because I, I worked at a number of technology companies and one thing that was always frustrating is that we put all this energy into building technology but then it always seemed like the actual process of making sure that it got popular and well accepted was kind of lacking and so I've, I've always taken it upon myself if I, if I did something and I thought it was worthwhile. I would always want to go out and actually tell the world about it. And that's kind of the opposite of most technical people, where they're, they're happy to be very content sitting behind their keyboard and never talking to people if possible. So I, I was always the one elected to go out to talk to the conferences and the user groups and to do the meetings. And then bit by bit over time, I, I guess I got reasonably good at, at, at doing that. And I, I came onto Amazon when I saw the, the promise of web services. And this is going back almost five years now, actually, to mid-2002. I, I saw the first Amazon web service. I was just captivated by it because it, it was really, it was something I'd been thinking about for a long time and talking to people about this whole idea of companies offering public web services and then developers building tools and applications with those services. But that was kind of a kind of a vague dream for a long time. I, I spent some time at Microsoft and we, we, we did a lot of work to further that dream, but it was still just kind of this vague thing with you know, applications like weather and stock quotes, but no real serious services. So at the point when I saw the first ever Amazon Web Service, I said, okay, there's, there's my dream. That was the thing I've been telling people about for three, four years. I, and I just decided I really wanted to be a part of that. And so I, I joined up with Amazon and been talking nonstop ever since. <laughs> okay, so why don't you tell us what is Amazon Web Services? Okay, so basically what we do is we open up various parts of our technology to developers. So for example, we have content-based services like the e-commerce service where developers have access to the product catalog. Another content-based service would be the Alexa services. We have a subsidiary company called Alexa where they do things like web crawling, web traffic metrics, web connectivity analysis. We have that exposed through a set of different services. We have infrastructure services, things like the ability to rent servers from us on an hourly basis, the ability to use queuing services to connect up different parts of an application, and then we have storage services, the Amazon Simple Storage Service, or S3, basically just online storage in the cloud, where developers simply push data to us and then we then store it on a very scalable, very reliable basis. Okay. And uh, what about my favorite service, if nothing for its name, the Mechanical Turk? Okay, so the Mechanical Turk is really interesting because it, it kind of inverts the relationship between the computer and the person. So for the most part, people ask computers to do things. And the Mechanical Turk turns that around and the computer is actually putting work out into the world and letting people find that work, do the work, and get paid for it. So this is very, very good for applications where people are great at certain things and computers aren't. So dealing with language, dealing with sound, um, dealing with ambiguity, making judgment calls, looking at images and deciding is this a, a picture of a table or a picture of a dog. You, know, you could spend years doing research projects to try to do image analysis or you can simply ask your average 10 year old and they can do a much better job than a computer can do at that. So it's good for breaking captures? In theory, although we've never actually seen that application <laughs> used. Um, but but the, the principle is the same. The principle is there's something that's very difficult to automate that by simply handing off to a person, the, the person can do a really good job. Okay. And who is your target audience? Are you going after startups who don't want to invest in infrastructure or large corporates who want to outsource some of their uh, infrastructure? We've actually got a lot of customers from both. Certainly the startups, because the startups always have this grand vision, but they, they, they have to be very constrained with the resources. They, they don't have the, the financial means to invest in a lot of servers and to scale up ahead of demand. So we have this concept that we've been calling web scale computing. The idea being that you architect your application for large scale but you actually start using resources only as needed. So if you need processing resources, you're using our Elastic Compute Cloud, you build a scalable application, but you, you turn on, let's say, one server to start, your application succeeds a little bit, and you see load on that server building up, you turn on a second, a third, and fourth server. If you wake up one morning, you find yourself on the front page of Dig or Slashdot or TechCrunch, or all of the above, if you're really lucky, you scale up your servers that morning or that day to meet your demand. When the demand goes away, when people go to the, to the next bright and shiny application, you, you turn down your server requirements and you, you don't have any, any long-lasting commitments. You simply use our, if you're using storage, you're using that by the gigabyte. If you're using processors, you're just using that by the hour. 
And so the, the, the costs you, you incur are totally based on usage. You, you don't have any minimum fees. You don't have any commitment you have to make. You simply, when you use it, you're paying for it. When you're not using it, you're not paying for it. So developers find that very, very attractive. Yeah, that sounds like a good value proposition. So, so where is Amazon Web Services today? Uh, you've been, like I said, it's, it's been developed for about five years. So um, how big are you today? At this point, we have a developer community of about 240,000 developers, and that, that's growing very, very nicely. We continue to add additional services to the mix. One of the things that I love to do, especially now that I'm traveling, is kind of step one of my job is to go out and give out the message of the Amazon Web Services, and I certainly do that. I go to user groups, I go to conferences, I go to corporations, but I also get to do a lot of listening. I get to meet one-on-one -on -one with individual developers. I had a, a great meeting this morning with a developer, and we went through his laundry list of things that he either thought were, were doing good or areas for either improvements or suggestions or even whole new services sometimes. So in the course of a week of, of these kinds of individual meetings, it, it's it's a, just a dream as far as product planning because we, we get direct input from real developers. It, it's not some kind of vague interpretation based on someone who never talks to users. I, I, I go back to my hotel every night and I write up a trip report based on I was there talking to developers and they said this is what we need and the, getting that kind of input is just so valuable for us. Okay, and I'm curious if the stats are uh, public, so how much storage you have, how much CPU uh, is being used, for example, every day, or how, what you can scale up to. I imagine it's, uh, we're talking about larger numbers here. Yeah, so we don't publish a whole lot of st stats on this yet, but the, the numbers are all moving in the right direction. A, a few I could share with you. We have about 5 billion objects stored in S3. Um, our peak transaction rate to date has been about, I want to say about 16,500 transactions a second. And our, our busiest transaction day has been about 950 million transactions for the day. So these are large scale services. Yeah, for sure. Does Amazon itself use the web services? We do. Now one of the interesting things, if you could look inside our firewall a little bit, you'd find that some of these services were actually built for our own use. And you'll find that now that they're built, that there's a very strong push inside the company to, to really, really eat our own dog food and say, if these services are good enough for the development community at large, they certainly should be good enough for, for our own internal use as well. Yeah, I remember reading a while ago that uh, Amazon.com itself was running on something like several hundred services. So when you order a book, uh, you hit several hundred services inside Amazon.com. So I imagine that that is how AWS was, uh, that's how it started. The vision, that's where it came from. That, that's exactly right. So my understanding is that when you hit an Amazon detail page for an individual product, that you're hitting between about 100 and 150 distinct services for things like getting product images, getting prices, getting product availability, getting reviews, and so forth. So we already had the fundamental architecture in place when we started doing the first Amazon Web Service. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, Amazon.com is very responsive. So it's impressive to see that even though underneath you're talking to several hundred services, um, how quick the page actually loads. So, so it's a good testament uh, to, to the scalability of the model you're proposing. So what will be your, I guess, last words on the future of where this is going? So even though we've been doing this for going on five years, it, it still feels like it's brand new. Um, the, there's still lots of developers that are very eager to learn about what we've done. And one of the things that's really gratifying about my job is that you can, as, as I explain these services in the course of a meeting or in a conference, I can almost see these kind of light bulbs lighting up over people's heads as they start to think of the implications and they start to think, what could I build and what, what challenges can I now take on based on the fact that I don't have to worry about storage, I don't have to worry about scalability, I don't have to go out and find servers and rack space and bandwidth. They can really focus on their own application. And I, I honestly think that there, there's a great future ahead of us for all of this. There, there's plenty of ideas we still have for services yet to be done. And I, I'm always happy to see the, the cool things that developers build. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Jeff, and good luck.